Okay, now for our work day on assignment three, really trying to get animation accomplished. To review, I have my rough storyboard sketch, which showcases the character I'm going to use, the background I'm going to use, the uh, actions that are happening. My scene is very simple. I like to have my rough storyboard up in the corner so I'm reminded of what I'm doing. Uh, a hand comes down, grabs my character's head, pulls it up, and instead of the character lifting up, the head kind of pops off with this kind of paper accordion effect, gets stretched, and then it gets lets go, and then the the hand actually doesn't let go. Huh. I have the hand pushing it back down and then leaving. But it might just let go and snap back. We'll see what works better. These are the decisions I get to make that are creative. In order to make this, I have two Photoshop files in my Assignment 3 folder. I have what's called an Assets file, which is green, and I have a Stage file, which is blue. And I open both of them up in Photoshop so that they're side by side. The Assets here, you can see I already have the hand, and the Stage here. The stage is where I put my finished frames, so I can always check what the last animation frame I did was. We are making frame by frame animation. So, I've already built frame one. I've built the asset I need for frame two. And I can keep building assets as I need. And then I want to understand it. So first, because I'm coming back to this on a Monday after not looking at it since Wednesday, I want to rebuild my first frame. So this was the first frame that's got the atmosphere. Now I'm going to move my character a little bit and I'm going to move this hand. So I'm going to use my move tool and take my hand asset and this hand is going to slowly start to be introduced just like this in the next frame. How do I move my character? Well, I'm going to take my character, and I'm actually going to change my first frame so that the character is a little bit bolder. So how do I turn my assets into a frame? Well, I save it once I've set it up and I've got all my different layers. Then I'm going to be seeing my history this whole time. And what I want to do is say layer flatten image. It's honestly kind of the, the easiest way. There's a few ways. Then I'm going to do Command-A to select it all, Command-C to copy it all, and then I'm going to go back in my history before I flattened. Then I go to my stage file, and I hit Command-V to paste it in. So I just replaced my first frame because I wanted the character to be a little bit bolder in contrast. So... Let's, let's go over it. I'm going to repeat it a lot because for each frame I make in my assets, I have to do that process to bring it to my stage. So I'm going to stretch this nice and wide. And I'm going to build my second frame now. I'm going to introduce the hand that's coming in, and I'm going to move my character. So how do I move my character? I make a duplicate of the character. So I always have my original asset there. And then I'm going to... Let's see, edit puppet warp. This is one way I can move it. Remember, you can set pins. We did this for our creature scape. Stay with us, Josh. And then I'm going to just move the head a little bit. Ah, but the head is so close to the wing that it, it puppet warped it on the same aspect. So what I'm going to do to get a better puppet warp is I'm going to cut it out really cleanly. I thought I had enough space, but I want to make sure at this resolution it wasn't enough space. And I'm going to delete that so to break any of those connections. This is why silhouette is so important in character design, right? So I can now go to Edit, Puppet Warp, Plot, where the feet are, I want that feet to stay put, plot the wings, and then I can move the head, 
right? And the rest of it will move. If I m move it on the neck, I don't know why those are mapping together. All right, so I tried to, yeah, cut between them so they don't map, but they're just too close in pixels at this resolution. But I can use that for the first one, and then I'll, I'll cut them and use my assets a little bit differently. So this is where it was. Now this is where it is, right? So it looks like he's stepping up a little bit. This is why I like to have the stage and the assets next to each other, is I can go between the first frame, this, and I'll just do Command-0 to fit it all on the same size, and this, right? So is that a good second frame? It works. It's just a slight change. So now how do I bring these assets over to my stage? Well, first I'm going to flatten the layer, layer flatten. I have my history open so I can see that because that's really dangerous. Then I say uh, select all. The shortcut for that is Command A. Then I say edit copy. The shortcut for that is Command C. Once it's copied, I can go back in my history before I flattened, right to there. So I get all my layers back, and then I go to my stage, and I go to Edit Paste, which is Command V. So now I have two frames of my animation. Okay, in this next frame, I've interrogated my assets a little bit, and no, I need to duplicate it for the creature movement, but also I need to physically move this head. I can't just use Puppet Warp. I'm going to cut it out. So I'm going to actually going to make a duplicate of the layer, and then I'm going to hit Command X. And what X does is it cuts it out of one layer, so I can paste it onto another layer. So I'm going to say Command X, separate it out completely from this layer, and then I do a Command V, which is paste again, right? We do a lot of copying and pasting. And now it's on its own layer, so I can move it independently. And then how can I move it and animate it? I can hit Command T or Edit Free Transform, right? And this way I can pivot that head a little bit separately and move it back. Hopefully enough that now I can merge the two and continue with Puppet Warp. So if I say edit, oh, the other thing I'll do is I'll put a filter on every once in a while because Puppet Warp tends to soften it. So I'm going to set my filter for Smart Sharpen to just very slightly sharpen the pixels back up. Okay, now edit Puppet Warp. I have a lot of animating to do. Now they're separate, which is nice. The first place I'm going to pin is that foot that stays still. And then the back, and then the wings, right? And I can now move this wing in a little bit. I can move, I've already moved this head up a little bit, so that's good. And I'll keep moving, I'll move this wing kind of up and down a little bit. So this bird's just kind of preening. Hit return. Now I can see what that looks like with my stage. So there's the bird's movement, that's pretty good. What about the hand? I need to move the hand. So I need to move the hand just a little bit more. And instead of just moving it, this is the key to assets. I want to duplicate it first. Use digital's ability to make perfect copies. And I'm going to move it down at about that rate, moving pretty fast. And then I'm going to turn off the hand before it, right? So it goes from this to this. Now, how do I bring those over? I can save, because I created new assets, Command S, and now I'm going to flatten. What you never want to do is flatten and then save, because you want all of your layers and your assets. So I go to Layer, Flatten Image. There's no shortcut for Flatten Image, which is good, because it's a dangerous thing to do. And I'm actually going to leave that little warning of, do you want to discard hidden layers? I'm not going to say dismiss that warning because it helps me remember that I just did something I need to reverse in my history. But before I reverse it, I want to select it all. And I can do that under Select. 
all, or I can do Command A. And then I want to copy it, Command C, which you can find under Edit. And then I want to go to my stage and paste it. But before I do that, I'm going to go back before I flattened it. So now I have three animation frames. And because I pinned that foot, even though we don't see that foot, it's going to look believable, like this creature is always moving from the same place. And I can save my stage. Okay, now the next frame. Let's duplicate the hand. And I'm going to move it down a little bit more. Almost all the way. In the next frame, it's actually going to grab the creature. And then the creature, I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to puppet warp it. Pin the foot, pin the wing, pin the nose, pin the spine at the neck, pin the wing. And let's see, it's going from this series of movements. So the wing has moved, is moving down. I can continue to move it down or I can move it up. Puppet warp is like any transformation. If you leave the screen, you'll lose it. And you have to repin it. So I'm going to keep moving the wing down. But this time I'm going to move the tail back a little bit. And then move the head down. Just move this wing up a little bit. So I'm not trying to like make him walk or do anything specific. I'm just trying to show that he's alive, a live element. So from this to this, that looks good. So what do I do? I say Command S because I created new uh, assets I want to save. Layer, flatten image. It's going to warn me. I leave that warning. And then I'm going to say Command A, Command C. Go back before I flatten the image, so I get all my layers back, and then go to my stage and Command V, paste it in. So now I have four animation frames. Now by doing it this way, if there's ever a, uh, a change I want to make, like if I think the hand moved too quickly, then I have all the assets that can rebuild it, right? To select all. And you can always find it under select and all as well. And in Photoshop, it will teach you the shortcuts. So when you find it, you'll see the shortcut off to the side. All right, so that looks good. Remember, this is not perfection in animation. We don't have months. We don't have years. And it's just us. So we're doing kind of quick and dirty transformations here. Not using any specialized tools, just creating it frame by frame. A lot of animation tools do a lot of this for you, like they time it out for you. Yes, Kim. Okay, now let's see if I can get the next frame done pretty quickly. So this is where I left off. I'm going to duplicate the hand, and then I'm going to move it down more. And this time it's going to grab the creature. So this is interesting. I'm going to duplicate the creature, and I need to pose it so its head is between the new hand. So I use Puppet Warp. Whoops. Always pin the foot first so it doesn't move on you as it renders. And remember, you can unpin by holding down Option. And you'll get scissors, and then you can cut your pin out if you put a pin that you don't want. And the mistake is to make too many pins. Because <laughs> when that happens, it gets all really mushy looking. So I'm going to flare this wing up really quick, because this is kind of surprised that he gets pinched. And maybe even move this foot down a little bit. Hit return. Now, this is what's interesting. To show that it's pinching the head, what do I need to do? I need to modify this asset, which is another reason why we always make duplicates. 
and I'm going to cut 